Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We pray that the Word of God will strengthen your faith and that your worship with us will bring joy to your hearts and lives. We are glad to have you join us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, He has removed your guilt forever. You are His own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to His will. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled us with the new light of the Word who became flesh and lived among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all that we do. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for the second Sunday after Christmas is recorded in Genesis chapter 17, beginning with verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will ing greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram, your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm of the day is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all the heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, you shining stars. Praise the Lord from the earth, lightning and hail, stormy winds that do His bidding. <clears throat> you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Second lesson is recorded in Galatians chapter 4, reading verses 4 to 7. But when the time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Alleluia. The gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 68. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel. 
because He has come and has redeemed His people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David. As He said through His holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our fathers and to remember His holy covenant, the oath He swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve Him without fear in holiness and righteousness before Him all our days. This is the Gospel of our Lord. We make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Word of God for our meditation, recorded in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut, and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion, and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. The law will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. This is the word of the Lord. My dear Christian friends, we have now entered into a new year. And with the passing of time, we are reminded that we are drawing ever closer to our Savior's return in glory. And as time marches on, we're also reminded that the things of this world don't last. And at the beginning of a, a new year, we often take a moment to reflect on things that have happened in the past, to remember what was done throughout the previous year. And as the, the world looks back, it marks all of mankind's great accomplishments. But what really do all of those things amount to? The records that were set this past year are likely to be broken in the future. Things that, that were built will deteriorate and be destroyed over time. Or perhaps future generations will build something bigger and better in its place. Now, all our accomplishments don't really last and ultimately don't amount to much. You know, our reading reminds us, the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like flies. To look back on the past, accomplishments in, any, in many ways poses a hollow celebration as it often serves to remind us of our own mortality. On the other hand, the Lord's salvation is eternal. And so as Christians, we have another reason to look back, a, a good reason to look at what has happened in the past. It's to be reminded of God's grace and to rejoice in what He has accomplished, to give Him thanks for all that He's done for us. The beginning of a new year is also a time when we look ahead. What will the future bring? Will there be good times or bad? Will there be happiness or tragedy? We don't know what the future holds. There's always some uncertainty associated with the future. And for many people then, the, that uncertainty causes some fear and worry. But even though we don't know what the future will bring, we do know in whose hand the future is. Our gracious God and Savior is in control. He knows what the future holds and what great comfort that gives us. Well, the Lord, here in these words recorded by the prophet Isaiah, speaks to us and points us back to his past faithfulness and ahead then to his sure and certain promises. And so as we might plan and look ahead to the future, Isaiah's words are a good reminder for us as to what is most important and where our focus needs to be. 
And may we be among those to whom these words are directed, those who pursue righteousness and seek the Lord. Let's pursue righteousness. And we know that human might cannot achieve it, but God in His grace gives it to us as a free gift. Pursue righteousness. Where can a person find righteousness? When we look around our world, we don't see much that would be considered righteous. Instead, we see hatred and anger and murder and war and crime. And even as we look at ourselves, we realize we're not righteous. We hurt others, we do things that we know are wrong, we break God's perfect law, no matter how hard we try, we fail. In fact, the, the more concerned we are about doing what is right, the harder we try to do what is right, the, the more we become painfully aware of how often we fail. Well, we're not righteous. But that is what God demands. God demands that we put aside all sinning, that we live perfectly right according to His Word. And that's the only way to gain His favor and enter heaven. We can't achieve that righteousness that God demands. And we're weak, sinful, mortal human beings. And so the Lord reminds us, huh, the earth will wear out like a garment, and its, habit, its inhabitants die like flies. And so the things of this world do not have any true lasting value. In fact, in reminding us of our sinfulness and mortality, God compares people, He compares us to flies. And we would consider flies to be rather insignificant pests. Well, you kill one and, well, there's another one there to take its place. They don't live very long lives, only a few days, and was a little bug spray can leave a pile of them lying there on the, on the floor. Well, how long is our life when compared to eternity? Rather short and insignificant. And yet the most amazing thing is that for such creatures, our Savior Jesus died so that we might have eternal life. And we're reminded of our own sin and mortality and the, the fact that this world will not endure. We're reminded that we need to be ready for our Savior's return so that we recognize that it's eternity that truly matters. And God's salvation and His righteousness will never fail. And so the righteousness that we need, that we cannot achieve ourselves, the Bible makes it clear that God gives us to that as a gift of gives us that to us as a gift of his grace. The Apostle Paul tells us that it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And God tells us in these verses from Isaiah, My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. And so it's God Himself who gives us hope. God sent Jesus to be our righteousness. He won salvation for us by His perfect life and His death on the cross. And so that salvation is a, a certain fact. It's a hope of which we can be sure. So certain that the Apostle Peter calls it a living hope when he writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Well, since that's the case, since we have that sure hope of heaven to look forward to, we don't need to worry about the future, whatever it might bring. We know that when our life here on earth is over, we will spend eternity with God in the glories of heaven. 
And we can also be sure then that God, even now, will be with us throughout our lives here on earth to provide and care for us. And so the Apostle Paul says to us, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? We're still in the, the Christmas season. Our readings all reminded us of, of God's faithfulness, that God kept his promise. He kept his promise to Abraham at just the right time as God determined it, just the right time as God directed it. His son was born to redeem us. And certainly, having given to us the greatest gift of all, that gift of his son to be our Savior, God will now be with us as we go through this life. And knowing then the salvation and the glories of heaven which God has prepared for us, that gives to us great comfort and confidence as we face the future. Confidence and comfort as we go through whatever trials and difficulties there may be. And we can join with the Apostle Paul in saying, what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. As through faith in our Savior Jesus, we're prepared for eternity. We are God's people. And even though the heavens and the earth vanish and are destroyed, we know that the Lord will always be there to protect and watch over us no matter what the future brings. God is faithful. He always keeps His promises. And that light we're pointed back to Abraham and Sarah. Remember, God called them to leave behind their home and family to, to travel to a distant, strange land. The Lord promised to go with them and to bless them. God promised that He would make Abraham into a great nation, that His descendants would be as numerous as the stars. God promised that His descendants would possess the land of Canaan. God promised that from His descendants, the Savior would be born. But how did it appear? As we heard in our first reading, at age 99, God appeared to Abraham to reassure him because Abraham and Sarah didn't have a child yet. Abraham and Sarah were well past the age of having children, but God miraculously fulfilled His promise. God gave them a son, Isaac. And yet, even at Abraham's death, so many of those promises still seemed impossible. At the time, all the land that Abraham owned was a burial plot that he had bought for Sarah. And yet, ultimately, God fulfilled all of those promises. Abraham and Sarah's trust in the Lord was well placed. The Lord is faithful. He did exactly as He promised for His people. Isaiah's words here, are first of all addressed to believers who would have been in exile and captivity in Babylon. And again, at that time, it would have appeared as though God's promises were null and void, impossible for Him to fulfill them. But Isaiah's message calls on them, trust the faithful God. And God would bring back a remnant to the promised land. Jerusalem and, and the temple which had been destroyed would be rebuilt and the Savior would be born. The Lord is faithful. And the Lord is faithful to us as well. We are no less God's people. Our trust in the Lord, well, it's also well placed. 
He will keep all the promises he has made to us as well. He will be with us to watch over and care for us in the future. He will give to us all that we need for this life. We may not have all that we want. We may not have the riches that God gave Abraham. But he will give us what we need. He promises to be with us. He promises to give us the strength to bear up under the trials that he allows into our lives and even to use those things for our eternal good. And like Abraham and Sarah, we've already been blessed through Abraham's descendant. Now that Savior from sin, Jesus Christ, our Lord, was born from Abraham's line. Through Jesus we have been rescued from sin and death. We've been given His righteousness as our very own, that robe of His righteousness for us to wear. And heaven now belongs to us. And so while we don't know all that the future might hold, we know that our gracious Lord and Savior is with us and He is in control. And that same Lord and Savior will continue to be with us to guide us through His Word. As we go forward, God's Word is there to help us in our Christian living, to guide and direct our lives here on earth. And while God's Word may not speak specifically to every circumstance we might encounter, God's Word does provide us with those principles to be applied in our lives. His law shows us how to live a life to His glory and thanksgiving for all that He's done. And His love in sending His Son in the flesh to be our Savior, well, that provides us with the motivation to live that life. Many times the problem isn't that God's Word doesn't speak specifically enough to, to our situation. But don't we have to confess that it's that we don't want to listen or we don't want to be bothered maybe with the effort required to, to carefully consider God's Word and to, to wrestle with a proper application in our, our life of that Word. Too often we're more concerned with our convenience how often we're more concerned with what we want and we look for a, a, a quick answer that will point us in the direction that we'd like to go rather than really seeking to, to dig into God's Word and discover what it is that God wants and what best glorifies Him and ultimately then what is truly best for us. But listen then to His Word. Take that time to learn God's Word. Don't be content with a, a basic knowledge, but strive to grow in grace and knowledge. Now, God's Word is still relevant today. God's Word is able to guide us through this life. But even more importantly, God's Word gives to us heaven and eternal life by revealing to us our Savior Jesus. And in doing that then, the Bible is able to give us a sure hope no matter what the future may bring. Our greatest hope is in God's salvation. So pursue righteousness. Follow the direction the Lord gives. He's provided us with righteousness through His Son Jesus. Provided us with salvation and a sure hope of heaven. And so no matter what the future might hold, we can trust the Lord because His salvation and His righteousness will never fail. Amen. Peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our Maker and Preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You've given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, tears of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick. Cheer those who are sad. Calm those who are distressed and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, 
our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.